again But it's the only way you're ever gonna learn You look back and it's all in the past I'm dwelling on the thoughts I cannot say to you If I don't say the words then maybe it's not true Hi, welcome along to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. Those were the days where we go back in time uh, and George gives us a, a look back and an insight into where uh, those days gone by. Now, we're in the 70s, George. Where are we? 70s, 71. Was in the 70s, 71. Yeah. Great stuff, George. Okay, and, over uh, to you. Thank you. A um, lot of optimists around. We finished seventh in the league the, league, the year before and, and had some very creditable performances. Uh, went out of the FAZE Cup tragically to a to a very late goal to Anderlecht when we, we could have actually sailed through, but it didn't happen. Um, but some of the victories in the league uh, suggested that we were, were uh, we weren't flattered by seventh. We we could possibly have uh, done better than that. Um, so in the seventies, what was happening in the seventies? Well, if you're a, a music fan, um, top of the pops, let it be the Beatles. Um, and second, in the summertime, Mungo Jerry, um, uh, Venus Shocking Blue by Venus, uh, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, Simon and Garfunkel. That, that's not a bad uh, uh, top four. And if you're a cinema goer, a picture goer, um, as uh, Marge and I certainly were, um, Love Story was was the, the, the top uh, grossing picture. Airport, um, MASH, uh, one of my favorite favorite pictures ever then certainly the tv uh, series of mash was was the one which uh, which never missed and indeed uh, so much so um upstairs in in in, uh, in my bedroom there's, there's a cabinet and it's got every edition of mash tape recorded um I have to confess it belongs to a certain Geordie Dentist store, not me. <laughs> it is. Uh, but Mash, Mash was one of our favourites. Um, and Patton, uh, a, a big war film, was was all the things there. And and I've got to confess, seeing every one, the, the love story I needed to be taken by Marjorie, but uh, uh, but I went and, 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 and it turned out to be uh, quite quite a good uh, a good picture. Um we're at the start of a, of a of an interesting season with a team that's done well. Everybody's optimistic. There they are. That's the squad uh, with Joe Harvey, and uh, um, it's a good squad. It, it's got a got a mix of talent from north of the border and and uh, um, from Wales and so on. And um, uh, you know, seasoned uh, defenders who. who uh, um, Take some, take some knocking off the ball, and, and uh, they've done well the season before. So, so that's the first, uh, that's the squad anyway. Um, next one, Steve. Now that's that's uh, uh, St James's Park with the East Stand uh, uh, in in uh, in view, uh, which uh, which is uh, um, uh, well, it's as it is is now basically with uh, in the ground. For what it's worth, I still think that's where any new development of St James's Park comes. It'll be there, but that's another matter. And it's also interesting to look at the back of the uh, back of the uh, 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 of the Gallic end. Uh, those stairs that everybody trundled up and uh, in the in the brick bogs at the bottom that everybody got their shoes wet in. Um, it. it, it once tempted to say happy memories, I'm not too sure sure what those were, but never mind. Um, I thought it was interesting to look at the development of the ground, considering what we're talking about now. I've put that one there because um, do you see the the, the, the different coloured diamond in the middle of the of the pitch? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Looks like it well, looks like there's been an alien landing. Well, it, it's 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 just sheer bloody clear. You know, it's the end of the season. And the, all the grass has been kicked off it by the games that's been played on it. I mean, if you think about that compared to what we'll play, the lads play on now, it, it's just ridiculous. There's no comparison, you know. It just it just bar me. Now that's an old painting I discovered um, of uh, of of the ground in in the in the late eighteen hundreds. Um, that old wooden stand of ours must have lasted a bloody long time. 
Uh, but look at the people standing on the top of that embankment. I mean, I wonder how many people fell into the ditch or fell back into the trees. <laughs> uh, it, it, it certainly uh, took their life into their hands, but uh, it's uh, interesting to see. Now, Pop Robson, Ryan Robson, um, I've put him on because we've got the start of the season. Everybody's looking forward to going forward. And uh, what's the first thing that happens is that uh, this young man calls a press conference at the at the Five Bridges Hotel and sits at a press conference um, side by side with his mother-in-law and tells the whole world that that's his mum, that's his, uh, his wife, um, uh, tells the whole world that Newcastle are a very unprofessional club and he's sick of the unprofessionalism that's uh, blighted his career and, and all that sort of stuff. I mean, can you imagine what that did to the start of the season? And didn't have did, social media, you see. No, absolutely not. <laughs> or no, an agent. Absolutely not, or an <laughs> agent. That That's interesting, because the only person at that time who did have an agent was Wynne Davis. Wynne mm-hmm. Davis had an agent, but none of the others uh, had cottoned on to that. Uh, the only other one was George Easton, and of course they, they shipped him out straight away to, to Arsenal. Um, so Pop Bryan does this, and, and um, well, you can imagine the the, the the ton of bricks that fell on him from a great height from all over. He got fined by the club, and um, now the, the story is he actually wanted a transfer. And he thought that was a way of getting it. Well, well, he got it, but he didn't get quite what he wanted because um, in those days, if you didn't ask for a transfer, uh, there was a fee in it. But if you did ask for a transfer, you didn't get anything. Well, Newcastle decided that uh, that was him ans- asking for a transfer, so he lost out on the money. But lo and behold, f- fairly shortly after that, um, and not long into the season, he was transferred to West Ham for a lot of money, about 75000 I think. But... Um, I'm not sure it's the way I would have gone about it, but uh, um, anyway, it, uh, that, that didn't set the season off on the right tone, I don't think. Um, at what's, at what's are there any other pictures of Brian left? Uh, it, it, oh, right, okay. Um, that's the city court, court of arms, and uh, we're now in the 70s because um, until the cup final in 74, that's what we used to wear on our shirts. And as you can see, it says Newcastle United Football Club. Well, unfortunately, in 74, the, 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 the cup final, the city council's uh, antipathy towards the club came to the fore again when they wrote to the club and said, we've noticed that you use the city coat of arms on your, on your, on your equipment and on your shirts, um, and you've never asked for permission. So, <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> the club got out McKeague, the solicitor, the right letter back, and basically the right, the right letter said, "Well, sod off with your coat of arms. We'll make one of our own," <laughs> and that's why we changed the coat of arms. Otherwise, everything—the blazers, shirts—all wore the city coat of arms uh, for important matches. But uh, this uh, undercurrent of antipathy between the club and the, and the council just kept popping up uh, and, and, and made a difference. Uh, next one, Steve, is that. Uh, or is that the, the lot? Yeah, we're under the games now. Wolves right. at home. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Wolverhampton Wanderers kicked off for season this this uh, this time, and uh, we uh, we wanted to. Uh, well, the fans wanted. I'm sure the club wanted as well to kick off on a high, uh, having finished a, a, a reasonable seventh in in in, in the league. Uh, Wolves always. Um, going to make life difficult for us um, but lo and behold um, we beat them 3-2 uh, and uh, 38,300 at the game so that's a decent crowd for a first game uh, and our and our team well people even from last season will be able to remember it uh, McFall, Craig, it happens to be Guthrie because Clark is injured Tommy Gibb, McLemy, Bunker Dyson, Robson, Davis uh, Smith and Jimmy Smith and Alan Foggan. Uh, Wolves are by now managed by uh, uh, another gentleman we get to know later, much later on called Bill McGarry. Uh, and uh, they've now um, slightly uh, adopted a slightly um, different style uh, to, to what they had before. Um, but uh, still similar players with uh, 
Jim McCallyog in midfield and uh, Mike Bailey, David Wagstaff. Uh, Dogan is now is still a centre forward, a big Irishman, but he's now got a, um, another Boston centre forward playing alongside him called Bobby Gould, who Wolves had bought from uh, from Coventry. Um, and anyway, uh, we beat Wolves three two. Excellent start of the season, everybody thinks. So, so it, it, we we get off on our uh, on our travels now. We're, we're away to Stoke, and uh, everybody thinks, well, here comes the. Uh, um, let's have a go at Stoke and see what we could do. Well, uh, it didn't work like that. Sadly, Stoke beat with three nil, and and well and truly beat with three nil, um, and uh, fifteen thousand one hundred at the Victoria Ground, uh, and. Uh, Stoke, our team, um, Azred, McFall, Craig, Guthrie, Gibb, McNamee, Monker, Dyson, Robson, Davies, Smith and Foggan. Um, the Banks in, in goal, the, the, the World Cup goalkeeper. Um, Mike Bernard in the defence, Jimmy Greenhoff centre forward, Harry Burris, Jerry Conroy playing mid, uh, attack in midfield, John Ritchie who was a was, uh, um, well-known uh, attack and midfielder. And Peter Dobin on the left wing, who 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 was a star for them for quite some time. Um, a game we never got into. That's the only way to describe it. Um, three nil, uh, Richie uh, and uh, um, uh, Burroughs scored, and uh, an own goal from Jimmy Smith, uh, protecting the far post on, on a corner, and uh, he took a swipe at the ball instead of it going out. It went in, uh, so it, it was an own goal. So three nil. Uh, First away game, which was which was uh, disappointing to say the least. Um, our next game is an away game at Palace, um, and uh, the thanks, Steve. That's that's great. Um, now they've changed their program again, and they've got this. It looks like very, a menu. Yeah, exactly. Does does look like a football program? And the previous all. one, I meant to say to you, looked like a record, like a like yes. a record in yeah. a sleeve, different so shape. That, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> So, I had a little circle in the middle, and I thought it looked that, like an that's album. right. They're always, they're always messing about with their programs, Palace. It, it, it's I wish Newcastle would mess around with us. It's the same old design again. Well, yeah, it's a pain in the backside, isn't it? But never mind. Anyway, we go to Sellers Park, 27,200 there, and uh, it's got all the makings of a, of a nil nil. Um, uh, it, it's pretty dire, but just before half time, um, Alan Birchinall, who who they've just uh, bought from Sheffield, um, squeaks in uh, a, a goal, a headed goal from a, from a set piece that uh, Jerry Queen, that, that that clever little midfielder, had set up, uh, and and uh, uh, Palace have got the, got the lead and and hang on to the lead because after that after the half time, um, they struggled against uh, Wynn Davis and and uh, um, and Pop Robson. They were battering their goal, but couldn't get an equaliser. But 1-0 at the Palace was, 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 where next, uh, um, uh, was, was the next result. And it, it was uh, disappointing because people thought, well, we're, we're better than Palace. But, well, on the day we might have been, but we, we couldn't put the ball in the back of net. And that's uh, usually quite important in a football match. Um, the next match is a home game against Forest. Um, and... Uh, Another game that we, uh, yeah, I mean that's that's. I think this is the third season we've looked at that that picture. I mean, it's, it's just uh, beggars belief. But never mind. Uh, teams the same: Ian McFall, Craig Guthrie, Gabe Monker, Gabe McNamee, Monker, Dyson, Robson, Davis, Jim Smith, and Gordon Hines. It's getting a run out on the left wing, and we're playing uh, not the Forest. Jim Barron, a, a northeaster in goal now. They've, they've, they've just signed, and uh, otherwise. Players that we know, Winfield, Chapman, Ian Story Moore, who they, they got from Arsenal, Peter Cormack, who uh, <clears throat> they got from, from Leeds, Alex Ingram and uh, Barry Evans. Um, a good Forest team, but uh, on the day it, it was a 1-1. Um, uh, the um, Forest, the goal was scored uh, by uh, Story Moore, the, the, this attacking uh, player that they got from Arsenal. Um, on 29 minutes, and it looked like we might struggle, but uh, on 78 minutes, uh, a corner and big John McNamee bundled the ball into the back of the net, so we ended up with a 1-1, with a 
and 35,000 uh, people go home reasonably happy. Um, the only ones that wouldn't be wouldn't be happy would be the people that left at the 10 minute corner flag because <laughs> they'd be home by the time the equaliser went in. Um, so the next game is another home game is is, is Blackpool at home, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually I don't know why I put so many of these in because they are boring. Um, thirty four thousand and forty one at the game, uh, and. Uh, I mean, the general feeling, it, 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 I can tell you, in the Gallagher corner was when Blackpool were there. So they wanted to see who was playing for them. You know, they'd had some exciting players for them, the likes of Matthews, etc., and uh, see what the modern players were like. And, and, and uh, well, the modern players were pretty good because the beat were 2-1. 34,000 at the game, and uh, everybody thought, well, um, uh, it's going well. We, 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 we scored, Gordon Hainson scored. In two minutes, and it looked like that was uh, uh, going to be plain sailing. And then, lo and behold, the the the, the lad Craven uh, scored in 18 minutes. And then on the hour, he scored the second one to give Blackpool a two-one win. Uh, our team was uh, uh, was unchanged except on the right wing. Keith Dyson stood down, and the lad called Stuart Barracroft uh, got his debut for Newcastle. Uh, who was to play for 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 us and certainly be a good servant to uh, to Newcastle for a while? The Blackpool team, well, it, it had one or two stars: Jimmy Armfield, England fullback; uh, Glyn James, Welsh Welsh uh, centre half; um, John Craven, and then in the midfield, attacking midfield, was it was a man called Alan Suddick, who we knew quite well. And you won't surprise me if I tell you that the star of the game was Alan Suddick. <laughs> he gave he gave his ex mates uh, a real run around on, on that game. So two one to Blackpool. It was it felt more like two one Alan Suddick when, when we left the ground. I've got to say. Um, so we're off now to West Brom, the, the away game to West Brom, and uh, um, it's. Uh, with some uh, trepidation, because we, we, we've had that loss to Blackpool, and people are thinking, well, can we can we turn it around? Well, lo and behold, they can. They beat West Brom 2-1, 25,100 at the game. Um, Jeff Astle scores for them um, uh, very early in 15 minutes. And then uh, just before half-time, uh, Keith Dyson scores the equaliser. And then on uh, 88 minutes, um, Wynn Davis... Uh, uh, goes up against uh, Ray Wilson, the fullback, ex England fullback, uh, and he heads the ball and it comes off the back of Ray Wilson's head and into the goal for an own goal. So we get a 2 1 win at West Brom, which is, which is, you know, lifts everybody's spirits no end and, and, and uh, starts to point with in the right direction. We're now headed towards uh, Derby. I think that there could be a programme for Derby. Um, and uh, that's it. And a couple of pictures. Yes. Um, and uh, um, ah, the the pictures are for the next game, Steve. Okay. okay um, we uh, um, go to Derby, and and uh, people are wondering if we could repeat the doors at West Brom. Well, we do. We repeat it exactly. We beat Derby two one, uh, thirty thousand one hundred to four hundred at the match. Uh, and uh, um, a good game, and, and Newcastle played particularly well. Uh, but the star of the game, uh, coming out of his, his shell again, was Jimmy Smith, who give uh, um, Derby a torrid time, despite the fact that Dave Mackay, who was playing for Derby then, did his utmost to break Jimmy Smith's legs. Some of the tackles on Jimmy Smith that day um, by Dave Mackay were, were horrendous. Um, and... Uh, when I when I look, I'm uh, in my mind's eye now. When I look back, because it, I went to this game with my family, because as, as I keep telling people, uh, my dad had a sister in Derby, and and always like the visitor if they had any excuse to get a bus to go to Derby, uh, and that was it. And and uh, uh, Mackay was really really rough on on Jim Smith, but just just made Jim Smith worth uh, tease him even more. He beat him once. He'd go back and beat him twice, you know, <laughs> uh, just to show how clever he was. Anyway, a two-one win at Derby is not to be sniffed at. 
Now our team's the one that you'd expect. McFall, Craig, Clark, Gabe, Burton, Monker, uh, Robson, Dyson, Davis, Smith. And David Young plays on the left because uh, um, uh, there's an injury uh, to uh, to Fogan. And uh, uh, Derby's team is now starting to uh, get into the sort of team that, that eventually won the league the title. Uh, McFarland, the Mackay, Willie Carlin, Alan Durbin, John McGovern, Alan Hinton, John O'Hare, and Kevin Hector, Hector on, the, on the left wing. Uh, Hector got injured, and, and they introduced uh, uh, Frank Wignall, a big centre forward that they bought from Nottingham Forest. So two well, one win at Derby, and, and we're, we're, we're going, we're going great guns in the league and, and getting well above middle middle station at, the, at this time, which everybody's delighted about. The next game's away game in the uh, League Cup. That wonderful uh, <laughs> competition that uh, that we look forward to every year, <laughs> and we go to Bristol Rovers, we go to Eastville to play the gas, and uh, everybody thinks, well, come on, if, for goodness' sake, this time, this time, the, we, we've got a lower league team who aren't playing very well. Uh, surely we can we can move forward to the next round. Well, we can't. The beat with two one. There's a couple of uh, pictures there, Steve. Of, uh, I couldn't get a programme, but there was a couple of pictures in the local paper. Um, and uh, um, that's 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 one of the goals, yeah. Th- it, it, Almost uh, a third goal for Bobby Jones, it says. So that, yeah. must have gone, that must have gone wide. Yeah, it hit McFall and, and, and on the chest. Well, well done, William McFall, because <laughs> not that it mattered. We're, we're still... Got the misery of another League Cup defeat, which uh, we're now getting, well, now getting used to. We're all already used to. Um, uh, expect little from there. Bristol Rovers' team had, had one or two names of, of players who've been around. Uh, Don Megson, who, who uh, was Sheffield for a long time and, and became a, a well-known manager. Ray Graydon, who, who became a well-known manager. And uh, Harold Jarman, who, for years after this... Um, Ended man- uh, managing Bristol Rovers. Uh, the manager at the time was Bill Dodgett Senior, um, the next uh, ex Chelsea man. Um, but we're out of the League Cup. Now, I bet that was a surprise, Steve. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, next uh, one is a, is a home game against Liverpool, and uh, having suffered the ignominy of defeat by Bristol Rovers. Nobody in their right minds going to think that we're going to get anything out of this game against Liverpool. Well, um, with Newcastle, you never say never. Um, they actually dug in and give Liverpool a really hard game. Nil-nil, I remember being at the game. It was end-to-end stuff, but nobody could slot the ball in the net. Willie McFall played out of his skin, um, as did uh, most of the defenders. And uh, Wynne Davis... Uh, did enough to keep Liverpool on their toes as well. Um, and uh, Liverpool, the strongest team, Clements, Lola, Lindsay, Smith, Tommy Smith, Larry Lloyd, Evan Hughes, Ian Callaghan, Alan Evans, uh, Steve Highway was introduced, in, a name that we'd get used to, and Peter Thompson, um, all in the current internationals. And, and uh, nil-nil was, was very creditable that, that people... Hadn't expected really, is, is, is to be honest. So we're now, we're now uh, uh, got um, uh, Liverpool nil nil, and we're off to West Ham uh, uh, as a, a two nil. Uh, sorry, we're off to West Ham, and nobody's expecting anything at all from West Ham. Um, it's. Uh, um, a tough game whenever we go there. And lo and behold, they pull their socks up and we'll beat West Ham 2-0 at, at, at Upton Park. 25,800 at the game. Both goals from Pop, Pop Robson. Uh, one in one in each half. And uh, everybody's absolutely thrilled to bits because it's a big win uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, against the West Ham team, it's... Uh, it's full of that um, stars. I mean, names that uh, the sons of some of these players are famous players now. Uh, Billy Bonds, uh, Frank Lampard, uh, Alan Stevenson, Bobby Moore, Harry Redknapp, Peter Eustace, Jeff Hurst, 
Jimmy Greaves is at West Ham now, and uh, Clyde Best, a, a, um, a black uh, left winger who who was a very tidy player, and eventually drifted into be centre forward. So two 0 at West Ham, and everybody's really really uh, chuffed to bits, and uh, um, we're now. Um, Looking forward to uh, a trip to Inter Milan in the in the uh, uh, in the um, uh, um, Fairs Cup. In the now Fairs I've got Cup. a quick photo here. Yeah, I'm not sure what yeah. the significance of that was. Well, that's the only one I can get from the away game, and that's the Milan goalkeeper having to be escorted off the pitch by the police. Um, he's sent off by the referee. Because he objected to Win Davies challenging him in the air, and he ended up sticking a one on Win Davies' chin end, and so the referee just sent him off. Well, he wouldn't go, <laughs> and that's why they that they get the the, the gendarmerie under the pitch to to, to escort him off. Um, so we 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 went to went to Milan and uh, got a creditable uh, one one draw. It looked like we were actually going to win. Win Davies scored on forty one. 44 minutes just before half time, and uh, it looks like that we were going to get a get a one nil win. But 85 minutes, uh, Seller, the, the the Italian international, uh, scored for for Milan in the Milan, uh, and and got the one one draw. But nonetheless, we're away from home. We've got an away goal, uh, and we've got a decent result. And that that not to be sneezed sneezed at. The crowd puzzles me. 14,460. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not sure what Milan was like in, in that particular time, but that seems desperately low to me. Uh, uh, I can't believe that uh, there was disinterest. They were playing in Europe, for goodness sake. But never mind. That's what the record says. And, and, and I'm sure that, uh, that, that where I get most of this information from is usually spot on. Um our team, well, you get, people can name it themselves. You know, McFall, Craig, Clark, Gibbs, Burton, Bunker, Robson, Dyson, Davies, Aaron Toft, and David Young's still out there because uh, Foggan and other left other wingers are are injured. Um, Milan, of course, um, littered with Italian internationals: uh, Fabian, Fichetti, uh, Sella, uh, Bergnich, uh, Corso. Um, uh, Pelazaro, uh, Mazzola, they're all, all current Italian internationals. So that 1 1 draw was very, very creditable indeed. Uh, and so we, we, we come home and we're at home to Coventry City. Um, and uh, um, I remember being at this game in the crowd in the, court, in the Gallagher corner thinking, well, they've had this tough Italian match. Are they, are they going to be up for this? Well, they didn't get a win, but they got a nil-nil draw against Coventry, which kept us going in the right direction. 32,095 at the game. And Harvey, true to his uh, players, plays exactly the same team that played in Milan. Uh, and Coventry come with their team with uh, 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 names like Glazier, Blockley, Clements, Willie Carr, Eddie and Ernie Machen, um Ernie Hunt, and... Uh, uh, Neil Martin, John O'Rourke uh, is a name that we, we'd get to know quite well. Um, a nil-nil draw. Um, Coventry played very hard and uh, for, for that nil-nil draw and thoroughly deserved it on the night, is, is my memory. Um, so we, uh, uh, we we get a uh, nil-nil at, uh, um, against Coventry at home and we're straight into the return leg against uh, against Milan um, for the, for the uh, Fairs Cup. And uh, um, much better program, <laughs> um, and, uh, and uh, we uh, we're in, into a tough game. It's going to be a hard game. Milan come uh, loaded that 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 the, the, the team with uh, big defenders to combat uh, Win Davies, uh, and unfortunately it cost them because it's they sacrificed the football for for trying to to muscle, muscle us out of the game. Uh, which was a mistake because, um, as any Newcastle fan would tell you that knows Win Davis, nobody muscles Win Davis out of anything. Uh, he can push as hard as anybody else and jump about six foot higher than anybody else. So there's no way they're going to push him out of it. Our team 
is the same team that Harvey would has always played, uh, and we've still got uh, David Young on the on on the left wing. Um, Inter Milan got all the Italian internationals in, uh, but uh, um, uh, and that's the happy uh, Newcastle fans at the end of the uh, uh, or during the the, the Milan game. It was a it was a game. Oh, I, I mentioned the crowd. Fixed fifty six thousand four hundred and ninety five. Wow, and that's a good good uh, a good game by any. And that's win scoring our goal, goal scoring his goal rather. The other scorer, of course, was Bob Monker, which was uh, funny how in the first cup. cup Bob Monker kept popping up with these these goals to keep us going forward, which is which is great. And as I say. Milan sacrificed the game, in my opinion, because they they loaded the, the the team with big big defenders, with with the idea that they would muscle us out of the out of the the competition. Well, it didn't work, so so they went out and we went uh, went forward. Um, so we're now headed towards a, a, an away game at Manchester City, um, and uh, yep, and. Uh, Thirty-one thousand at the game, thirty-one thousand one hundred, and uh, uh, I've got to be honest and say that uh, supporters that I spoke to and the people in the family were, were slightly concerned that uh, uh, the team would be knackered after their exploits in the in the first cup and and, and other games, but uh, not not to be undone. We, we the lads dug in and we got a one-one draw with. Uh, um, It'd been nil nil at half time, and that's looked how it would stay. Um, but uh, um, actually, we we um, we went ahead through David Ford, who was in the team, and uh, on on the left wing, and uh, hoped that we would uh, carry it to the to the end for a victory. But no, um, on eighty minutes, Doyle of Manchester. Um, uh, uh, player um, scored the Mike Doyle scored the equaliser uh, to to make it one one, and their team has loaded with the usual internationals like Franz Franny Lee, uh, Colin Bell, uh, Mike Somerby, all in the team, uh, and it made for for a good game. But it was a, it was a a one one game. The next uh, game is a home game against Arsenal, um, and uh, um, a game that. Um, uh, <clears throat> always excited the fans at, at Newcastle. Thirty-eight thousand at the game, and uh, um, everybody's hoping. Well, another win, and we're, we're already above middle. But let's keep it, keep it going like we did the season before. Um, the team unchanged, unchanged. Just David Ford on the left wing instead of David Young, um, and Arsenal with. Uh, um, Bob Wilson and Gold by now a firm fixture, and a young Irish lad called Pat Rice comes in at right back, who was to be the right back for the next decade, I think, almost. Uh, and uh, Frank McIntock still there, Jordy Armstrong on the wing, um, Ray Kennedy now in the in the attack uh, for um, uh, for Arsenal, um, for Seaton Delaval of a lad uh, who sadly. Um, uh, passed away not too long ago, I think. Uh, had uh, Alzheimer's, I think. Uh, and uh, George Graham, of course. Who, who, who was, uh, anyway, a one-one draw. It, 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 people had been hoping for a win, but against Arsenal, one-one's not bad. And, and we, uh, uh, we 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 uh, uh, look forward to uh, staying in that mid-table in the league and, and perhaps going higher. The next game is an away game to Wolves. Um, and uh, people got fingers crossed. This, this is a game where we, we, we usually come close. And indeed we do, but not close enough, unfortunately. We, we, we lose 3-2. Having been in the lead at half-time 1-0, um, we, uh, um, uh, when Davis scored just before half-time, and uh, then straight after half-time, Bailey, Gold and Wagstaff rattled three in before we could reply. Uh, and that was with a with an own goal, uh, and Davies had a hit in the defender and going going into the back of the net. Uh, but the last uh, fifteen minutes or so was was quite exciting. Um, but we we couldn't uh, we couldn't uh, get the equaliser. Our team was 
as I say, that, what you'd expect, unchanged by Harvey. And their team with Bill McGarry still now still their manager, firmly their manager, with uh, still got Parks and Goal, John McCallyog and uh, Jim McCallyog rather, and a new uh, midfielder playing for them called Kenny Hibbert, the brother of a of a Hibbert that we we get to know uh, very well later on, and up front to, to Bobby Gould and Derek Dugan, so it, it three two loss, but a, but not a not a hammering. Uh, and we come home ready for our next uh, venture into the Fairs Cup, in a home game against a Hungarian team called Peshki, um, Peshki Dozer, not uh, not Ushpesh Dozer, but Peshki Dozer, um, and uh, um, an unknown team, but but with quite a reputation in in uh, in the national league, uh, and we go to uh, they come to St James's Park and and we. Uh, uh, it's a good game. It's a good game, and, and to show how the FA Cup, the Players Cup, ex- excited the, the Gallagher, fifty-one thousand at this game uh, against a team that most of them couldn't pronounce. Never mind seen before, uh, and like I couldn't pronounce it. There, <laughs> it uh, um, anyway. It, it, it was a, a really good game, uh, but they they suffered like a lot of the Continentals. They just couldn't handle Win Davis. We beat them two 0 and Win scored both the goals. He could have had a hatful, uh, except the goalkeeper played out of his skin. And the, our team, well, the fall Craig Clark Gibb Young, Young in centre half because of the uh, McNamee and uh, uh, um, uh, Ollie Burton are injured. Bob Monker, Robson, Dyson, Davis, Smith, and David Ford on on the left wing. So we go to 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 a, a, a a two 0 lead in, in 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 that game, and everybody relaxed. That uh, well, surely when we go to the away game, we can we can finish that off. So we're now um, uh, um, uh, at uh, home to uh, Manchester City. No, we we've got an away game to Everton. Uh, that's right, away game to Everton next. And uh, yes, that that's it. And uh, everybody's thinking, well, um, to the uh, reigning champions and they're playing well, uh, can we get anything out of them? Well, unfortunately not. Uh, uh, They beat us 3-1. We're not not really in the game. Even our goal was an own goal by one of their players. Uh, And uh, uh, 43,000 at the game. Tried and tested team we send out, Rotavi sends out. With uh, an addition of Jim Smith uh, in the team uh, in, 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 instead of uh, instead of Foggin, and uh, um, we're just not in the game. We're just not at the races with this one. Three-one defeat, and and uh, not a one that we ever look likely to get to be part of. So we 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 now slip it again in the league a little bit, uh, uh, much to people's dismay, but. Uh, Never mind, we, we've got to pick ourselves up and come home to a, a home game against uh, Manchester United. And uh, um, not the best not the best team in the world to come and try and pick yourself up against. Uh, 45,100 at the match. And that's the Manchester United squad of the day um, with a huge, huge amount of talent in, in that squad. Dennis Law, second from the left. Bobby Charlton in the middle. Well, He's uh, follically challenged, like, challenged like we are, Steve. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> and two, two in from the right is Nobby Styles, um, a great little character who, who played in the World Cup, um, and I had the pleasure of playing against as a schoolboy. And uh, yeah, a great, a great, uh, a great squad with uh, with Manchester, and we got a great win, one 0 victory against Manchester United, forty five thousand one hundred at the game. And uh, it's a tough game. It, it's hard, and, as you'd expect. And uh, the goal scored by none other than Wynn Davis uh, in 51 minutes. And uh, I have to say, the last 10 minutes was a case of hanging on. Because by then, Manchester United were in their stride and really were giving us a run around. Um, and uh, that included having Cade, Charlton, Best, Aston, Dunn, Burns uh, uh, in the team, 
the new goalkeeper called Jimmy Jimmy Rimmer, who who was to become the the, the firm favourite for for quite a long time. Um, but we got a one nil and, and and hung on to the one nil, uh, and delighted we were. So the next uh, game is, of course, is the return game in, in Hungary uh, against uh, Peshki. And uh, um, everybody's hopeful that we get something out of this. Well, um, we played quite well, but unfortunately, uh, on the on the night, um, in 18 minutes, Bob Munker scores an own goal. And then 85 minutes, just before the end, they get a penalty. And uh, it's big John McNamee who, who tips a centre forward over and they get a penalty. And they make it 2-0 to match the 2-0 that we got at St James's Park. And that's how it ended after extra time. So it went to uh, it went to penalties. And, uh, well, uh, the history of us winning matches and uh, with penalties isn't a very good one. It might have started with this game because we got beat five two on penalties. So out of the out of the first cup we went quite disappointing because we played reasonably well. Uh, but I have to say, um, creditable performance uh, for a team that's uh, tried to defend its, uh, itself or, or tried to get back in the, in the first cup, uh, and uh, nearly did, nearly did. However, we got to pick ourselves up and go to Southampton for an away game. Uh, and uh, um, pick ourselves up. We don't because we lose 2 0. 19,200 at the game. And uh, Mickey Shannon and uh, Jimmy Gabriel score the goals. Our team is is the team that played in uh, in Hungary, bar one. Keith Dyson is, is, is left out. And Harvey uh, gives a debut, debut to a young Irishman called Tommy Cassidy. Who were good, who was going to be a firm favourite for Newcastle for, for many years to come. Um, Southampton have their, their, all their stars on, on show, including our former centre half, John McGrath, and uh, Jimmy Gabriel, Mick Shannon, Terry Payne, Bobby Stokes. Um, they're all there. Uh, Bobby Stokes, of course, was to go out and score a cup final winner with, um, for Arsenal, not, not, for, not for Southampton. Um, so we, we, we come home and we're coming home to a, a home game against Ipswich. Um, now everybody's convinced, surely, this is this is uh, a game we can get something out of. And something out of we do. However, um, the, the, the loss in Hungary and the out of the Fairs Cup uh, is had its uh, depression on the fans because the crowd now isn't 50,000, it's 25,000. Um and that's not really surprising. It was, it was disappointing. Um, but we get a nil-nil drawn and kind of gives you a point in the league, keeps with at mid-table and, and we can do things. And the team's exactly the same. And and uh, Harvey keeps faith with Tommy Cassidy, keeps him in the team, uh, and uh, uh, which uh, which uh, is a good sign for him and a good sign for us because he becomes a good servant of the club. Um, Ipswich team, Mick Mills, Billy Baxter, Bobby Bell... Uh, uh, Clive Woods and Mickey Hill, all well-known professionals and good players in the first division. So a nil-nil draw is quite a good result and, and gives uh, some stability in, in our position in the middle of the league and not, not sliding down again. So we're now off to an away game uh, um, to Tot Tottenham Doctor. Oh, Steve, I've missed a friendly. <laughs> Before that, I knew there would be one. Go on, <laughs> Air United, for goodness sake. We went to Air United and got beat off Air United before 5,000 fans, 2 0. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what our team was, but we lost 2 0. Uh, and why we went, no idea. Um, unless somebody was gen wanted to be generous to Air United and give them a payday or not, I don't know. But uh, it fancy it. it I just, as you can see, I get speechless with these friendlies because I can't see why they weren't there. If I could see there was a um, a testimonial game or or, or a charity game, because we've done lots of those as well over the years, but when it just says friendly and leaves it blank like that, you think, well, okay, <laughs> friendly it is. Anyway, um, we, we go to the away game at Tottenham, which you put the programme up for, uh, and... Uh, um, 
uh, as I say, no, nobody's sure what will happen to this after, after the friendly and and the disappointment of the of the FA's Cup. However, um, uh, Newcastle being Newcastle, the, the team rolls their sleeves up and has a go and uh, beat Tottenham 2 1 at White Hart Lane. 38,800 at the match. And uh, uh, Tottenham go in the lead. Uh, no, they don't. We go in the lead through through David Craig. And then uh, Tommy Gibb, just after half time, makes it 2 0. And then just on the, the hour, Martin Chivers uh, makes it 2 1. Uh, as I say, 38,800 at the match. The last 10 minutes was exciting because by then, uh, Martin Chivers and, and, and others uh, were really having a go at us. And by this time, of course, Spurs had bought Martin Peters, the World Cup winner, from West Ham. So Martin Peters was in this team as well. So you had uh, um, Martin Peters, Gilzean, Shivers, Mulry, Peter Collins, Steve Perryman, uh, all having a go at Newcastle that day. And uh, we, we, we got a 2-1 win, but the last uh, the last 10 minutes was certainly uh, white-knuckle time. Um, and just to uh, finish the commentary about Spurs, the right back was reasonably well known to us because his name was Joking. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> um, he keeps coming back to haunt us in one way or another. Um, well, they're then off back home to a home game against Burnley. Uh, and uh, Burnley are, are, are not uh, playing particularly well. Um, uh, it's funny, I. I, I this this came up because it's a whole program because it's showing you the front and the back. I thought it was going to show you the team sheet, but it didn't. It just showed you the front and the back. Well, the back's just as just as disappointing as the front, in my opinion. But never mind. We played Burnley and and always uh, entertaining games with Burnley, uh, and uh, we beat them three one 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 at half time, and then uh, uh, Pop Robson and David Ford score two more to make it three one. The first goal by Bobby Monker in six minutes, a header from a corner. And uh, um, our team, well, people can recite it themselves McFall, Craig, Clark, Gibb, McNamee, Monker, Robson, Dyson, Wynn Davis, Ben Arentoff, and David Ford. Um, and Jimmy Adamson, by now, another Jody, is manager of Burnley, their, their former captain when they, when they won the championship. And uh, their goalkeeper, Peter, Peter Mellows, uh, is uh, Chesley Street. Dave Merrickman from Sunderland area. John Angus from Ashton. Um, and a young man called Jeff Nulty uh, is introduced. as It gets his debut in this game at Burnley. And that's somebody else that we get to know quite well. And then there's Dave Thomas and uh, uh, Ralph Coates. All, all Geordies um, in the team. So a 3-1 win against Burnley and we're climbing the league again so so we're really really chuffed about that we're now off on, on a away game to uh, Chelsea and we're uh, um, hoping that we might get something out of it well unfortunately uh, Hope didn't do enough because we, we didn't we lost 1-0 39,400 at the game and uh, um, it uh a good game by by what I read, except that uh, we just couldn't get the ball in the back of the net. But then and they they managed the only goal from um, Keith Weller, who who they just bought from Spurs, uh, and the team was littered with stars, of course: Bonetti, Harris, David Webb, Charlie Cook, John Hollands, Peter Houseman, Keith Weller, Ian Hutchison, and Peter Osgood. Um, a good team, and the fact that we it was only one nil, uh, in some ways, gives our our team some some credit um the next game is a home game against uh, Huddersfield and uh, Huddersfield aren't uh, playing well and are sitting bumping along the bottom of the league you know between bottom three down to actual bottom some of the time 21,000 at the game so so Huddersfield don't exact, ex exactly excite the Gallagher crowd uh, but never mind um Important for us is that whether they're excited or not, we beat them 2-0. That's what's important. And Keith Dyson and Pop Robson score the goals. Uh, one in each half. We're going at half time 1-0. Team unchanged again. Um, McFall, Craig Clark, etc. The only uh, uh, slight problem is that halfway through the second half, Pop Robson gets a nasty injury. 
and uh, he has to be substituted. And what does Joe Harvey do? Puts Ollie Burton on the right wing. On the right wing. I mean, I'd love to talk to Ollie, uh, who I know quite well, uh, and say, "Well, what was he thinking about that, Ollie?" You know? uh, because you know he's got got people sitting around him who could easily play on the right wing. But Joe Harvey puts Ollie Burton on. Whether you wanted to protect the lead or not, I don't know. But uh, anyway, Huddersfield came and, and, and they, they they give a good game. Um, one or two. Uh, uh, good characters in this in the squad. Um, Trevor Cherry, who, who used to play for Leeds. Um, Frank Worthington, who, who used to be uh, Leicester centre forward. And uh, Brian Greenhall, also um, Manchester United and Leeds. Um, and uh, uh, um, as I say, a, a tidy team, but uh, not tidy enough for that day. We got a 2 0 win, and that's, that's us claiming. Climbing back to past the middle of the league and, and, and up towards the, the upper half. Next game is a home game against Crystal Palace. And uh, uh, everybody's hopeful that uh, we had a good game in Palace. We didn't get anything out of it. But uh, um, surely we can do the same as St. James as well. We do. 21,700 at the game. And we beat Palace 2 0. And both goals from Brian Robson. Um, but the start of the, start of, the uh, of, of the game, in my opinion, because I was at that match, uh, was little Benny Arentoft who, who uh, set the goals up and, and just give uh, give uh, Palace a, a torrid time. Um, Win Davis, of course, as well, was there with his with his uh, performance in the mid middle of the uh, of the attack. Uh, but it was Benny Arentoft who made the difference, and and Pop Robson who scored the scored the goals. Um, we're now off for a away game to Leeds, um, and uh, this everybody knows this is going to be a tough game because Leeds are one of the ones who are are pressing hard to be uh, league champions. Uh, and tough it was. We were never in the game, and Leeds beat us three 0 one nil at half time. Um, our team slight change. Uh, McFall had been slightly injured. In training, and Martin Burley got his debut. Another lad that uh, served the club well while he was there. A tidy goalkeeper, not 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 uh, international class, I, I would say, but but a tidy goalkeeper in, uh, for 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 us, and, and a good servant, a, a, a nice lad to boot, uh, in my opinion. And Leeds, well, because it was star-studded Leeds: Sprake, Maidley, Rainey, Cooper, Hunter, Charlton, Giles, Bremner. Mick Jones, Peter Lorimer, and Alan Clark, who was uh, one of those forwards who just drifted through the game, but put the ball on his toe and bang, it was in the back of the net. And, and Clark um, scored the uh, scored the first goal, um, but the, uh, the the remaining two goals were both penalties by Johnny Giles, uh, thanks to. Uh, um, John McNamee getting upset with uh, Jack Charlton and uh, Mick Jones on two occasions. Uh, so we, we, we give two penalties away. Um, and uh, so the next game is a home game against Stoke. And everybody's hoping, well, we'll pick ourselves up. That'll, that'll, that'll be fine. We'll not, uh, not have any, uh, uh, we'll at least get a point out of this game, surely. Well, we didn't. We, 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 we were absolutely off it, uh, to put it mildly. Um, never in the game. Stoke scored two goals, one in each half, uh, and we never looked like scoring. Um, and uh, probably one of the easiest games Gordon Banks has had at St James's Park, in my opinion. And uh, the 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 Jimmy Greenhoff scored both the goals that that the centre forward and the star of the game was a slim man called George Easton in the middle of the middle of the, middle of the park. Who, who, of course, knew St. James is about like the back of his hand, having been with us for so long. Um, so we now um, come to da, 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 FA Cup third round. And everybody's looking forward to this, aren't they? Well, of course they are. Uh, we're going to have a cup run. If we cannot have the first cup, let's have a go at the FA Cup. So we draw Ipswich Town at home. And uh, we... Uh, um, 32,000 at the game immediately because it's FA Cup. There's another 12,000 on the gate. And uh, the team we set, Harvey sends out is, is a one that we uh, 
uh, we, we we all know our heart by heart now, and everybody thinks, well, yes, this, this well, surely this is this is a chance. The only difference in the team is is that David Ford is left out on the left wing, and a young man called Ian Mitchell, who Harvey's wants to give a trial to, is put in on the left wing, um, and uh, everybody thinks, well, that was a good move. He scores a goal. He scores the first goal. Ian Mitchell, it was just before half time, and everybody thinks, "Well, this this kid's going to be good." Um, and then after half time, of course, um, they just fade and fade to the point that uh, on seventy six minutes from a corner, um, Mills, that the fullback, Mick Mills, uh, ha- hangs onto a ball on the edge of the box and drills it into the bottom corner and gets a one one draw. So. FA Cup third round. There's there's a replay coming, and the replay of course is on the following Wednesday. So off we go to Ipswich for the replay, and I think there might be a program for the replay, Steve. Um. Yep, and uh, um, we uh, everybody's disappointed in the one-one, but feel at least we should be able to get a a, a, a victory or. or uh, Get, stay in this game at, uh, at Portman Road. Well, sadly, we, we can't. Uh, by half time, we're, we're 1 0 down, and just after half time, uh, we're 2 0 we're two nil down. And just towards the end, uh, Pop Robson um, scores a consolation. So, out of the FA Cup, boys, that's no surprise. I don't think that many people buy now, uh, but it is still disappointing. Um, so, we, we now. Um, off to an away game at Nottingham Forest, uh, and uh, everybody's hoping, well, pick yourselves up, lads, and, and, and get a couple of points out of Forest, and that'll make up for the disappointment. Well, uh, no such luck. Um, didn't make up for the disappointment because we lost 2-1 again uh, to Forest at the City Ground. 21,900 at the game, and the same young man who scored at St James, as Ian Story Moore, who they got from Arsenal, scored both their goals. And Pop Robson scored ours. Um, five minutes and 40 minutes for Story Moore. So we're 2 0 up at half time. And Pop Robson, Robson gets our consolation on the 80, 85th minute. Uh, and for five minutes, it's it's exciting. But before that, it was we weren't really in it. Forrest were winning. Um, the team, well, uh, McFall, Craig, Clark, Gibb, back to me, Monk, uh, Dyson. Robson, Davies, Aaron Toft and Aaron Fobbin, uh, which has been the team uh, more than a dozen times uh, that I've been reading, reading these games out. And uh, um, as people get sick of me saying is that I, I, I'm struck by the faith that Harvey has in, in the lads he puts in the team. Uh, and it, sometimes it repays him. And, uh, well, most of the time it repays him. So we now uh, are, have got to face... Um, in a way game, it, uh, um, oh no, we don't. We've got a friendly <laughs> against Sutherland. Um, 16,000 at the game at, at, uh, at Roker Park. I mean, I, I, I really, really don't understand what this one, it, it's the James's Park rather. I really don't understand what this one's about, other, th- other than, um, it, it wasn't a testimonial. It was. It was. It doesn't even say on the program really very much. Anyway, um, uh, it's a one-one draw, um, and uh, so it didn't do anybody any harm. And uh, but both goals at the end, Hughes for them on the eighty-two, Bob Monko for us on the eighty-seven. I've dug and dug in the journal to find out what that match was about. It's a friendly end of. Um, <laughs> so. Um, so we, we get rid of that and we go away to to Burnley in a way match to Burnley in the league, and uh, um, our usual uh, team, uh, you know, McFall, Craig, Guthrie's in because Clark's injured. We're after that; it's all the same, except on the left wing instead of David Ford or any of the others. Stuart Pla- pa- Barraclough gets another run out, uh, and that's uh, that's quite interesting to see. Um, Burnley. Well, they usually smattering of uh, uh, of Jordies in their team, John Angris, uh, 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 Eric Probert, Martin Dobson, Dave Thomas, Ralph Coates, 
Steve Kinnan, and of course in midfield, uh, uh, young Jeff Nultley. 1 1 we get at, at Burnley with 12,500 at Turf Moor for that game. I still can't imagine how Burnley managed to survive on crowds of 12,000 for all those years, but never mind the do and, and, and seem to be good at it. Um, so we return home for a home game against Chelsea and uh, we uh, hoping that we may get something out of the game. Well, uh, hopes there are enough against a side like Chelsea because uh, the beat were 1-0. Uh, early goal by uh, a new young forward that they've, they've introduced into their team called Alan Hudson, who is to become something of a, of a, of a star. Um, a very tricky player and, 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 and real... Uh, um, uh, deadly finisher if if he got the chance. 1-0 and, and they got it early in the game um, and uh, uh, 17th minute uh, it goes in and uh, um, uh, well uh, we never looked like getting one back uh, by the same token they, they never looked like breaking us down again and uh, the team was the same Stuart Burrick, Barrowcliffe left on the on the left wing and Chelsea of course with all the stars um, Harris, Webb, McCready, Cook, Collins, Houseman, and now this new star, Alan Hudson, who was going to become quite a star for them in, in, in the uh, years ahead. We're now off to Huddersfield, um, in a way, a game at, uh, at, at Huddersfield Town. Uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, sorry, I, I, is it Manchester United first? Yes, yes, yes. No, I've got... I'll tell you what that. I'm going to do. I'm going to do the ads while you get your paperwork sorted, George. Great, great. A big thanks to our sponsors, Skips and Bins, telephone 0800 2545 253, email inquiries at com. website skipsandbins.com, easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Darren Baldwin Funerals, based on old Durham Road in Gateshead, their phone number is 01914782730, you can email Darren at darrenbaldwinfunerals.co.uk or go to the website darrenbaldwinfunerals.co.uk. Thanks to Garden of Healing Dispensary, CBD hemp and cannabinoid specialists based on Nun Street. The GOHD.com is their website. And thanks again to Three Property Investments, who specialise in sourcing investment properties for their clients who are looking to invest in the Northeast. They offer a full in-house service from sourcing the deals to managing the properties for you. They've done over 100 plus deals in the past 12 months for clients all over the UK. Give them a follow on Instagram, matty.patter underscore northeast property and phil.read underscore northeast property or email phil at threeproperty.co.uk if you're interested in getting a good property deal. Thanks to the lads at Mr. Vicky's uh, Handmade in Cumbria. These are hot sources and you can find them at mrvickies.co.uk or place an order uh, by ringing 01768 210102. Thanks also to the lads at Blowhole Brewery. A fine uh, amount of ales available from their website, www.blowholebrewery.co.uk. Thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video technology. Thanks to qtechshop.co.uk, the makers of pool tables and snooker tables in Walls and Newcastle. And the guys who run our website, NUFCMatters.com. If you want to subscribe, hit the badge in the corner and you can subscribe for free. Still do seven shows a week. Hit the thumb up to like the video and click share to share via social media. We're also available as a podcast on iTunes, Spotify and the rest. And if you want to become a member, click join underneath this video or you can put your smartphone over the QR code. It will take you to the membership section of the website. Uh, if you choose to go that way, uh, then you will get a pen, a cup, a scarf and a membership card and entry into the monthly draw for a one-off payment of £25. We also give you something for free. If you want a car window sticker, email john at nufcmatters.com and he will send you one if you are a subscriber. We also help the food bank on here. Uh, NUFC fans, foodbank.co.uk is the match day bucket. If you go there, you can make a virtual donation at any time of the year. And don't forget, Peter Beardsley Soccer School, October half term, Monday the 24th to Friday the 28th of October. You can book now, peterbeardsleysoccerschool.com. Peter's also running Monday night training on the 26th of October. Again, the same website. And if you want to meet Peter Beardsley, well, you've got three chances. 
Newcastle Legends game, Friday, October the 14th. The Peter Beardsley token is taking place after the game. Tickets for this are available from nufcmatters.com. Adult admission is a fiver. Junior admission is £2. The token is adults only, and that is a tenner. And uh, the events are all taking place at the Fox Hunters Pavilion in North Shields. We've got Peter Beardsley available, uh, tickets available for the St. Dom's Catholic Club show. Uh, you need to go straight to their website um, and uh, you just buy your tickets there. And for this one at the Irish Centre, uh, tickets are available now on nufcmatters.com. Don't forget, Supermax at the Dog and Parrot, every pre-match and every post-match, every home game. And John Gibson and John Anderson are at Pumphrey's pre-match only. If you did like our true crime stuff, it has all migrated to the true crime channel. So get yourself across there on YouTube and subscribe today. Okay, George, back with you. Yeah. Well, all I did was turn over two pages. That's what happened. Uh, but never mind. That that gets uh, back in the, in the place. We're off to Huddersfield anyway, in a way match at Huddersfield. And uh, um, a game which... Uh, Everybody who thought we might get something out of, in fact, open for a win. Well, we did get something out of it. We got a 1 1 draw, uh, 15,500 at Leeds Road. Um, Leeds Road, a fascinating. Have you ever been to Leeds Road, the old ground at Huddersfield, Steve? It, it, it's the, yeah. arch, the archetypal uh, wooden uh, uh, sleepers to stand on and all that sort of thing. It, it was a fascinating place to go. Anyway, um, 1 1 draw with. Uh, um, Jimmy Smith on song. This this was a game where he nearly won it on his own. Uh, he, he managed to score the goal that uh, that Matt had got the, the one one draw, and uh, on in fact he he, he scored the, the the opening goal was in seventeen minutes with Jim Smith. He had a good game. Uh, it looked like we'd get the win, but Trevor Cherry took a free kick towards the end, eighty minutes, got the equaliser for Huddersfield. But uh, it was it was a, a a good game, and, and and the lads did well to get to get the point, and and the team was as we've been playing all season: McFall, Craig, uh, Clark, Gibb, Burton, Monker, Robson. By now, we've got the introduction of a new striker called John Tudor, and uh, uh, Win Davis, Jim Smith, and and David Young, um, and uh, one one draw put us back in the. Uh, feeling better with ourselves, having had some uh, disappointing uh, defeats. Uh, and our next game is a home game against uh, Tottenham Hotspur. Um, and uh, uh, looking forward to a good game, but looking forward to making sure we didn't uh, let them get away with anything. And, and uh, we didn't. We beat them 1-0, 30, 32,000 at the game. And... Uh, uh, nil nil at half time. It was. It looked like it was uh, could possibly go that way, but then on seventy seven minutes, Pop Robson uh, drilled a, a, a beautiful um, shot in after a knockdown from Win Davis, and uh, um, another game where Jim Smith shone. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur. Well, the same big star names uh, and other personality names: Jennings, Kinnear. Cyril Knowles, Perryman, Collins, Mulry, um, Peter Martin, Peters, Martin Shivers, and Alan Gilzean. Um, a strong Tottenham team and, and, and a good victory, in my opinion. Uh, and, and we played quite well as well. Um, we're now off to Manchester United. Um, and uh, uh, goes without saying that this is going to be tough. And... and and they, they're going to be wanting to get their own back because we've had a couple of good wins against them. And sure enough, that's what happens. But it's only a 1-0 win, uh, 42,000 at the game. Uh, the goal scored by uh, Kidd, Brian Kidd, uh, in 43 minutes, just before half-time. And uh, he just, it just, they just made it impossible for us to get back in the game after that. Uh, our team unchanged, uh, except on the left wing is David Young because they... they um, uh, Stuart Barraclough got, a, got an injury in the previous game. Uh, Manchester United, well, the names stand out, you know. Uh, Sadler, Dunn, Aston, Crerund, Morgan, Bess, Charlton, Kidd, and so on. So, um, quite a quite a um, a good game, but, but a loss nonetheless. And, and uh, uh, we'll follow that with a, a 
again, the fixture uh, right has un, uh, quite hard on us because we got straight into another away game this time at Ipswich Town, and uh, um, we uh, um, people hoping that we, we'd get something out of this game. We 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 we'd uh, we'd done well against Ipswich in the past, and and thought we might in this one, but. Uh, Unfortunately, it it didn't work like that. It uh, we lost one nil um, to a goal from uh, uh, Jimmy Robertson, a little winger that they were introducing into the game. Uh, but we we played up played well. Only seventeen thousand at the game, uh, but that's the sort of crowds that Ipswich used to get. And our team exactly the same with uh, um, uh, David Young still on the left wing. And John Tudor still in in, in uh, uh, long, alongside Win Davis. Um, we're now off to uh, to uh, Everton. Sorry, a home game against Everton uh, at, at St James's, and uh, um, surely, um, even though they're pressing for the top of the league, let's give them the game. Was the feeling I think that people thought around, uh, and and the disappointing results reflect in the crowd. Twenty two thousand for a, a team that that looked like they were challenging for the title uh however they, they weren't playing as well as they had been the previous season and so we we end up beating everton 2-1 with twenty two thousand eight hundred at the game um one nil at half time and uh um we uh bob monk uh, scores the opening goal in 13 minutes and uh joe royal makes it 1-1 uh, uh just after the half time and then the first goal by none other than John Tudor on 70 minutes uh, against Everton uh, to give us a 2-1 win. And uh, a good win it was in the end because they, they really had a go at us. Um, Everton's team was virtually the um, title-winning team from the previous year, but they, they didn't seem to be gelling the way they did the, day, the, day, the year before. So we're now um, uh, uh, at home again. We've got a couple of home games to follow. And uh, we've got our old friend Southampton at home. Um, and uh, uh, everybody's hoping that uh, we could turn this into a victory. Well, unfortunately, we, we don't. It's a 2 2 draw. Uh, but the attendance tells, tells, tells an awful lot 15,600 at St. James's Park. I mean,. Um, I wasn't at the game, so I can't tell you what it was like. But uh, I can imagine what it was like. I mean, hell of a crowd. They, yeah, there'd be, there'd be holes all over the place. But never mind. Um, we uh, go in at half time one one nil, and uh, uh, everybody's. I think you know. Well, this is it. We're, we're going to get uh, um, get something out of this. But our old friend John McGrath, of course, comes up for a corner, doesn't he? And bang, it's one one. Uh, another corner within within minutes. Uh, Jimmy Gabriel, McGrath knocked down, Jimmy Gabriel, bang, 2-1 to Southampton. And uh, everybody think, oh, goodness, no, it can't, it can't. Well, Keith Dyson sol solves the problem. He got the one in the first half. Well, he goes and gets the one in the second half to, to, to make it 2-2. Two -two. Uh, but uh, it gave everybody a bit of a sweat on, uh, thinking that we we'll, we'll, we'll might not get anything out of that game. Next game is a home game to Derby. And... Uh, um uh people haven't forgotten um the the, the way um dave mckay treated jim smith at uh, at, uh, at the away game at their place and uh, um 26 and a half thousand at the game and uh um we uh, go in half time 2-0 uh keith dyson and alan Foggan score goals um after half time, uh, Derby's uh, um, uh, put one under some pressure, but it, to no avail. Uh, and uh, Alan Foggan scores a third, so a three nil up. And then right on the stroke of the of the whistle, um, uh, their young wing out Hector scores uh, their consolation three one. So um, climbing back up the league after two wins at home like that, and and, and looking. And looking quite solid um, is uh, is the best way to put it. So we're now on an off and on a away game to Blackpool, uh, and 
whether we can get something out of it or not, we don't know, because we, we would hope to beat them at St James's, and of course they turned us over. Well, lo and behold, we returned the favour. We beat Blackpool 1-0, 14,600 at the game, and uh, uh, it was uh, nil nil at half time. Uh, but it, uh, I, when I read about the game, it was a, a, a good football game, uh, and they're doing uh, both sides playing some attractive football, uh, and uh, um, uh, Newcastle in, in with a shout all the time, and then we're just as everybody was thinking that uh, it might uh, drift into a nil nil, up steps Alan Foggan to dribble his way through the penalty area, and to make it one nil to Newcastle, uh, and. Uh, uh, everybody's absolutely delighted. Of course they are. And uh, our team, well, it's it's the same team that we played uh, uh, for for the last few games. But in the middle of the uh, uh, of of the second half, Jim Smith gets injured, and he's replaced by a young man called Irvin Natras, who's that's his debut in, in into the first team at Newcastle, uh, and he's soon to become a, a a bit of a star for us. The, the Blackpool team is, is the one that played at, uh, um, at Newcastle, except that uh, they introduce a, a midfielder called Tony Green, uh, who, again, we, we get to know very well indeed, who plays alongside um, uh, another um, uh, midfielder, called, uh, striker rather, called Alan Suddick, who we know very well. And then on the left wing, they introduce another young player called Mickey Burns, well, because we're getting to know him reasonably well as well. So, but it, we're a one 0 win at Blackpool, as as uh, uh, as I say, cements well league position and 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 pushes we in the right direction, uh, and we're, we're we're heading very nicely. We're off to Liverpool for an away game, and uh, it, we know everybody knows it's going to be tough, and uh, um, but lo and behold, the lads uh, when when they need to roll their sleeves up to prove that they can. Um, they get a 1-1 draw at Anfield with 45,000 at the game. And that's a, a Liverpool paper report about... Was it nil-nil? Yes, yes. No, I've got 1-1. One, nil-nil one. on the uh, on the right up here. It is. Ah, that, that's... Uh, I've obviously um, gone, gone, gone a year ahead, I think. Uh, Newcastle's so... superb defence inspired by Moncur, it says. Yeah, well... It's a repeat of the, what this one that I'm looking at now, 1-1. One, one. Um, however, I'll have to dig that out again the next time, uh, look at it more carefully. Um, a good game. The, the, the team really did did their best. And uh, uh, Jim Smith was, was good. And, and uh, um, uh, Wynn Davies was injured. And John Tudor took over the lead role at, at uh, centre-forward and scored the equaliser at, at Anfield. Uh, and... Uh, um, Liverpool's star was Peter Thompson on, on the wing, uh, and uh, um, but it was Lola, the, the fullback, that scored the equaliser just before half time. So, one one at Liverpool, and that's helping we're going in the right direction. Uh, we now have a home game against Leeds United, um, always, always a good game against Leeds, and particularly at the moment because they're one of the teams that's pressing, pressing for the title. Uh, and, and we all know that this is going to be a tough game and reflects in the crowd what they think about it as well. 49,640 at this game. And uh, our team, you can people can recite it by now, I'm sure. My Paul, Craig, Clark, Gibb, McNamee, Bunker, Foggin, Tudor, Dyson, Jim Smith and uh, David Young's on, on the left wing. Um, uh John Tudor scores our goal um, uh, in 59 minutes and everybody thinks we're going to get a win. Well, on 82 minutes, the ball goes out on the right to Peter Lorimer and he's barely over the halfway line and he lets fly with his right foot. And I, I don't think William McFall even seen it before it was rustling in the back of the onion bag. I mean, it was that kind of cannonball uh, shot and that's what Lorimer was uh, noted for. Um, but a 1-1 draw against the team battling for the title. Uh, and their team was was all their stars. You know, the Sprake, Madley, Rainey, Cooper, Hunter, Charlton, Giles, Bate, Jones, Lorimer and Alan Clark. So a 1-1 against, against Leeds. And, and, and we're, 
we're we're still sitting nicely in the middle of the table, which is which is which is great. And uh, we're now at home to Manchester City, um, and uh, uh, hoping that we can get something out of the game. Twenty nine thousand one hundred at the match, and uh, we we get a nil nil draw. It's. I remember being at this game. It was. A, it was a nil nil draw, but not a dour nil nil draw. Good football from both teams, but just uh, um, when they got the chance, the two goalkeepers were playing out of their skin. Both Corrigan and uh, McFall uh, uh, did their, their, their best that day uh, to thwart the, the attackers, and uh, a nil nil draw it was. Um, our team was unchanged except the. Uh, just after half time, David Young was taken off, and Irvin Natras came on again. Uh, for another run out, which was uh, appreciated by the crowd, and City, of course, had all that stars on: uh, Colin Bell, Mickey Doyle, uh, uh, Willie Donaghy playing fullback now, and Joe Corrigan in goal. So then they'll draw to City, and, and that uh, is good because it, uh, it it fixes our our league position very nicely, takes the pressure off a little bit. And we're now off on a way game to Arsenal. Um, and uh, uh, it, we, we realised this is going to be a tough game because Arsenal on top, a couple of wins and they could push themselves into contention. Uh, and uh, so we, we get a, quite a tough game at the Highbury uh, at, at 48,100 at the game. And they beat us 1-0 uh, with Charlie George scoring the, scoring the goal. Um, uh, clever footballer, Charlie George. Um, uh, but in their team, of course, now they've got uh, Jordy, George Armstrong, the, the, um, Darrell Ladd and Ray Kennedy from Seton Delaville. Um, it has a, um, uh, that touch of, uh, of Jordy's in the team, which uh, doesn't make the loss any easier, but uh, um, it's a 1-0 uh, loss where it could, have been, it could have been worse. So we're now uh, heading towards the tail end of the season and my next game's home against West Brom, against West Ham, rather. And uh, we uh, we uh, know it's going to be tough. West Ham got a, a team of all stars, and uh, it's a one-one draw. Twenty-two thousand seven hundred at the game, and uh, we uh, it was one-one at half time. Um, John Tudor scored on thirty-eight minutes. Uh, it's interesting to see how John Tudor's name keeps creeping on the score sheet at the moment once he's settled in the team. And uh, Jeff Hurst, just on a stroke of half time, uh, heads in an equaliser. And our team, um, uh, McFall, Craig, Clark, Gibb, back to me, Bunker, Foggan, Tudor, Dyson, Smith, and David Young. Manchester United now, uh, sorry, West, West Ham United now managed by. Ron Greenwood, who was ultimately to become the England manager uh, and had his own style of playing, but still the uh, um, uh, um, the stars in the team uh, that, that they've had for a while. Um, Bobby Bobby uh, Moore was, was in the team. And interestingly, at this one, it says Frank Lampard Sr. In the previous game, it just said Frank Lampard. Well, it says Sr. now. Because juniors already playing at their junior team, so Frank Lampard Junior is around, but not not, not at that level. It, it, it's, it's his old man, um, Bobby Moore, Billy Bonds, Harry Redknapp, and striker for West Ham, Pop Robson. Pop Robson. He eventually got his transfer. He he tried to get it at the start of the season in a rather unconventional sort of way, um, and then Jeff Hurst. So one one uh, wasn't a bad result. Next game is uh, um, West Bromwich Albion at home, and we uh, we beat West Brom three uh, nil. That's played very very well, and another game where. Jimmy Smith demonstrates what Harvey was trying to persuade him at the beginning of the season he was going to do, just it took a bit longer than sure Harvey thought it would. Um, and uh, David Young, John Tudor, and Jim Smith scored the goals. However, the crowd, 18,400, uh, was uh, to say it's the end, end, end of the season, is putting it mildly. Um, but that's still a poor crowd for, for, for that uh, sort of game. So 3 0 against West Brom. Um, and the West Brom team was uh, had all their usual players in. 
Um, Jeff Fasco, Bobby Hope, Asa Hartford, Tony Brown, and Col no, not, none other than Colin Suggett, of course, who, who they bought from our friend down the road. And we're now at the last game of the season, which is an away match at Coventry. And uh, whether or not it was uh, uh, after the Lord made sure or not, uh, we lose this one 2 0, and we're never really in it as the, con as the contest. Um, mm. they, they beat us and they're, they're, um, with ease. Uh, is how I read it, and uh, twenty thousand five hundred at the game, and uh, Ernie Hunt and Trevor Blockley score the two goals, and we end the season on a on a sadly on a defeat, um, but uh, uh, nonetheless um, not a bad season all told. Um, uh, sad about all the cups, including the Fairs Cups, um, and then after the Coventry game, I suddenly discover. There's another friendly. <laughs> Fifth of May, May, two days before the cup final, we play an exhibition game, an All Star eleven against uh, Newcastle United, and and um, again, what exhibition? I still couldn't find out what it was supposed, but it was an exhibition game, All Star eleven. Uh, against Newcastle. Actually, I think this, it says here yeah, I've got a picture, picture number 48. Is it another? Uh, no, the last one was Coventry. Right, okay. Um, it, it might have been the program. Anyway, um, I couldn't, it, it just says an exhibition game. Uh, we, an exhibition game which we won 6 5. <laughs> so at least it was entertaining, entertaining for the 10,000 people that bothered to turn up. That's the other clue for me, is that if it was something really important, I mean, compare that exhibition game with Jackie Milburn's testimonial. Nearly fifty thousand at Jackie Milburn's testimonial, even though it was it was it was a, it was a, an exhibition game of a sort. This is an exhibition game with an all-star team, and uh, um, ten thousand at the game. When I look at the exhibit the, the, at the at the all-star eleven mind, I have to say I wonder if if there was madness in, in Harvey's method because in the all-star team. <laughs> was a little in midfield player from Blackpool called Tony Green. <laughs> and well well whether half he wanted to look at Green. I don't know. But that, that was the end of the season was an exhibition game. We finished um twelfth uh, and uh with uh, um you know it it could have been that much that much better with just one or two results. Um and Arsenal went on to win the title. Leeds were second, uh, as as we as as was looked like being, and they won it hands down. I mean, there were there were ten points ahead of Tottenham in third place. Um, well, in fact, more than ten. There were there were, there were um, thirteen points ahead of Tottenham in third place. So um, they they won it hands down. We uh, didn't do too badly at twelve, but again, our defensive uh, output is is fascinating. Um, the only team to, to better our um, defence that year were the Arsenal, the champions, Leeds, who were second, and Liverpool, who were fifth. They they had slightly better goal against Collins than we had, but our 48 in 42 matches was as, was as good as, uh, as, good as uh, you could expect. The other interesting, intriguing thing is, once again, uh, 49 games, 25 players used. Uh, that's credit to Joe Harvey, I'm afraid. But a slightly disappointing season, but at least we weren't scrambling around the bottom looking for looking for um points to stay up, uh, and perhaps a foundation for a better season next time. Brilliant stuff, George. Your research, as always, spot on, mate. And uh, thanks for taking the time to do it. Look forward to catching up with you, you. on the new one. Yes. And that will not be too long, Steve. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.